What's up guys, I'm Kel, Red Zone Rogue, and welcome to another Force of Will strategy video. So this video is going to be a little bit different than usual. Usually I like to cover my own homebrewed rogue style decks, but this one is actually a deck that you know has topped a lot of tournaments recently. This is a Lilius Petal or Alter Fox style deck, and the reason I'm covering this is because right now in the meta, there is a shitload of Scheherazad. It's all over the place, 70 to 75% of the field is Scheherazad, with a couple Kyrix here and there, and a couple Ayus here and there, and also Nine-Tailed Fox kind of appeared out of nowhere. There's some cards in the Time Spinning Witch that actually made him viable again, and I think it's really cool. So this deck is basically um, one of the ones that topped a recent ARG. Um, it didn't get first place, but it did still get in the top eight, and I give him major props for that. And for that, I still consider this a pretty rogue deck. When everyone else is playing Scheherazade, some people have the balls to try out good old Lilius Petal here. And so without further ado, let's go over the deck. This one is actually, like I said, a very competitive deck. One that you can bring to ARGs if you, if you can play it correctly, I guess. So let's first start off with the ruler of the deck, Lilius Petal, Agent of Salvation. Uh, he's a pretty well-known ruler at this point, so let's just go over him really quick, just for just for all the new players, and or in case you don't know or don't remember, uh, he's a ruler, human. He has a judgment of zero, which is sweet. He has an energize of a wind or a darkness, and that's it for this side. Um, pretty good. Um, and then on his J ruler side, the nine-tailed fox here, which is really hard to read on the camera. So it says this card cannot be destroyed. First of all, he's also a J ruler myth. He has no attack and defense. He cannot battle. And then you can banish a Wind Resonator and a Darkness Resonator and a uh, Killing Stone. Then you can search your hand deck, blah, 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 for a Chimera card. Basically, we're going to be searching our sideboard for our Chimera card. And then you put it directly into the field. If you search your deck hand, or if you search your deck, then you have to shuffle it. Play this ability only once per turn. You can actually play that ability on your opponent's turn, which is pretty sweet. So basically, we need a Wind Whisk Resonator, a Dark Resonator, and a Killing Stone. And you can also rest him to shuffle a card named Killing Stone from your graveyard into your Magic Stone deck. So you can keep you can keep doing it. Um, this is just a very powerful card in general. Um, so much so that several cards got banned from this, specifically the Griffin, which made this deck very viable. However, with the addition of some Time Spinning Witch cards, the Life Stealing Altar specifically, um, Fox is now viable again, so let's go over some of the cards. Well, let's start with the uh, the stone base. So Fox's stone base is pretty simple. I run a four of Killing Stone just because it is a crucial card to the Nine-Tailed Fox. If you don't know what it does, um, it comes into play rested unless you control uh, Lilius Petal. We do, so it doesn't come into play rested. It counts as a wind or darkness stone. It can produce a wind or darkness, and uh, when it is put into the graveyard from your field, your opponent loses 100 life and you gain 100 life. Um, just a fantastic card, must have for Fox, obviously. And then we have a four of Magic Stone of Gusting Skies because we are playing some light in the deck, but we also need a good amount of wind as well. So between this and the Killing Stone, we have eight sources of wind. And then we have a two of Magic Stone of Heaven's Rift. This one does a darkness or a light. So between uh, Heaven's Rift and Gusting Skies, we have what six sources of light and six sources of darkness. So yeah, let's get on with the resonators of the deck. All right, so first up, we run a full play set of Lorite, seven luminaries, Astrologen. If you're playing a New Frontiers right now, you've probably seen this card all over the place. He's an incredibly powerful card, and he's even better here in the Nine-Tailed Fox because we can use him as fodder to summon our Chimeras. He's a 100, 200 for one win. He has quick cast, he's an elf. And when he enters the field, cancel target, activate, or automatic ability your opponent controls. Also has this other ability of removing three spirit magics in your graveyard from the game. We don't care about that because we're not really playing with spirit magics. Well, there's a couple. Well, it could come up every... It could come up, I guess, feasibly. So let's continue on with the rest of the resonators. So here we run a singleton, monkey trapped in life, and demonic dead. These both kind of do the same thing, but in a little bit different ways. So the demonic dead... He costs one of any and a darkness. He's a 300-300, and he has an ability. Pay 500 life, put this card from your graveyard into your field, rested. Pretty sweet. So if he's in your graveyard, you can just get him back on the field basically for free for 500 life. That's really, really good. Um, Demonic Dead is a fantastic addition to any Fox deck. And then similarly, Monkey Trapped in Life. He's a one drop, 100-100. When he's put into the graveyard from the field, 
Return it to the owner's hand, you lose 100 life. So this guy, Demonic Dead, is actually really good against discard spells. Um, specifically, there's a lot of thought control going around. If they discard this, if they make you discard this, you can still get it back. Um, Monkey Trapped in Life, not so much. Uh, he, you can only get back to your hand if he dies. So, yeah, I, I run one of each of these guys. We also run a two of Messenger of Lilius Petal. Um, just a really good card for the Ninetale Fox. 600, 600 for a Darkness and a Wind. When it enters your field, you can search your stone deck for a special magic stone and put it on top of the deck. And then you shuffle the deck. You have to show your opponent, but still really good. We always get a killing stone with this, just to ensure that we have killing stones so we can make more chimeras. So next, we obviously run a full playset of Tama, Familiar of Holy Wind. Just a good 200, 200. When it enters the field, you get a draw card. And you can banish it to deal 200 damage to a resonator. Eh, that really doesn't come up because we're going to be using this to make chimeras. Also, it only costs one. So one drop, draw a card, make a chimera. Pr pretty good. So this version of the deck actually runs Fox Spirit. I've seen some versions of the deck not run it, but I wanted to try the Fox Spirit because any incarnation of the Ninetale Fox that I've played has never run this card. And this is, you know, I wanted to try it out. And so Fox Spirit is a 300-300 for one wind. You can pay zero, and this card gains darkness in addition to its other attributes until end of turn. So it's just really, really good fodder for the Nine-Tailed Fox for making Chimeras. But specifically, it combos really well with the Nine-Tailed Fox Resonator right here. This is Lilius Petal, Kitsune King. He's a 800-800 for two wind, or two of any, a wind and a darkness. He's a Resonator human. It says, we'll hope, we don't really care about that. When this card enters your field, you may search your library for up to two cards named Fox Spirit, put them into your hand, or put them into your field, then shuffle your deck. And then it says, whenever a Chimera enters your field, put the top card of your Magic Stone deck into your field. This card is absolutely bonkers for the deck. Anytime you get a Chimera, you autom automatically get another wind or another stone from the top of your deck. Hopefully you get a Killing Stone so you can make making Chimeras. And when you play him, you immediately get two Fox Spirits. So you play him... You get two Fox Spirits, and then you can get rid of them both to activate um, the Fox's ability and get a Chimera. So finally, we're going to move on to our non-Resonator cards. Starting off with the Life Stealing Altar. This is where the deck gets its namesake, the uh, Altar Fox deck. Uh, it is an addition for one light. It says, whenever you do Judgment of a Ruler, invert this card, flip it over. And that's really easy to do because Fox has a Judgment of zero. And it says, whenever a Resonator you control is put into a graveyard from the field, you may pay one if you do draw a card. It's pretty good. So if you play this late game after Fox is already flipped, you can still get some still get some value out of it. And then on the invert side, it says, um, it's an addition, inverse. When this card inverts, put the top card of your Magic Stone deck into your field rested. So it comes into play rested, but it's still really, really good. Um, being able to get a couple of these out and then flip Fox and hit... You know, at least one Killing Stone is absolutely, absolutely crazy. Um, it is that interaction that makes this deck viable, honestly. You can also banish a Resonator and give target Resonator minus 400, minus 400 until end of turn, which is pretty good. Um, that can combo really well with the Monkey Trapped in Life or the Demonic Dead. So, yeah, Life Stealing Altar is... Altar? <laughs> said that weird. Life Stealing Altar is a um, fantastic addition to this deck. And honestly, really what makes it work. Next up, we have two Flourishing Hope. For a single light, it's a chant. Quick cast, target J Resonator gains. This card cannot be destroyed until end of turn. Then remove this card inverted from the game. This card is really good at protecting your Resonators. Or if your opponent somehow removes the Nine-Tailed Fox's ability to not be destroyed from him, then you can give it back to him with this card. So that's pretty good. And then you also have the inverse side, Burgeoning Despair, is quick cast. For two of any and a darkness, it says play this card only from your moved area. Target player banishes two resonators. So it's really cool. It protects your guys and forces them to get rid of two of their guys. Next, I run a two of final battle. This is just a really, really good one-sided board wipe for X and one darkness. It's a chant. You can pay 200 life instead of paying uh, one of any up to X times to play this card. So you can pay basically 200 life per X instead of uh, one of any. You pay any combination of that. And it says, J Resonators, your opponent controls gain minus X100, minus X100 until end of turn. And that is J Resonators. So it hits J Rulers 2. This card's really, really good. One sided board wipe. Basically, can help you finish the game wiping their board and crushing in with your big old Chimeras. Next, I run a three of True Blade of Spirits. Quick cast, Remnant, Chant. This one is probably the only spirit magic we play, which is, you know, maybe why you can get Lorite back, but honestly, not really. Um, 
only costs a single wind. This card deals 500 damage to target Resonator with total cost 2 or less. Just an incredibly good removal spell. Because it has Remnant, you can play it twice. Um, honestly, you see this card all the time in New Frontiers, and for good reason. It's a, it's a really good, efficient card. Next, we run a 2 of Separation of Fates. This is a single light cost uh, chant quick cast. Target J Resonator loses all abilities until end of turn. Draw a card. So this is one of the ways that your opponent can make you lose all abilities of your Nine-Tailed Fox, including the ability to not be destroyed, which is why it's good to have the Flourishing Hope to give him that ability again. And, um, yeah, just really good card in general. It replaces itself. Um, it can screw over certain strategies. Just, just really solid. Next up, we have some Cancel Spells with Favor's Spell. One cost, Quick Cast Chant for one wind. It says Cancel Target Spell with Quick Cast, so you can cancel your opponent's cancels, cancel their removals. Um, it says Spell too, so you can cancel uh, Resonators with Quick Cast as well. Yeah, just really good, efficient spell. You see it all the time in New Frontiers. Similarly, we run a full playset of Severing Winds. Um, yeah, I mean, once again, you see this card all over the place. It costs two of any and two wind, but we don't really care about that because if your opponent played two or more spells this turn, you can pay two of any and two wind less to play this card, so it's free. And it says cancel target spell. So if your opponent played two spells, then you have a free cancel spell. That's uh, pretty good. Or you can just hard cast it as well. But yeah, I mean, Severing Winds is kind of a no-brainer these days if you're running wind. Or sometimes even if you're not. And then finally for our main deck, we run two Kaguya's Moonbeam Butterfly for X and then a wind, and then a light, it's champ. You can search your deck for a resonator or addition with total cost X plus one or less and put it on your field and shuffle your deck. Um, a lot of the times we're just gonna go get a life-stealing altar. Um, for just a uh, wind and a light, it gets you one because it's X plus one. So just that gets you a life-stealing altar. You can also get any other resonators you might need, but life-stealing altar is really the, the big target here. All right, so next we're gonna go for our sideboard, which is really important with the Nine-Tailed Fox or any other competitive deck, I suppose, but specifically for the Nine-Tailed Fox because our Chimeras are in our sideboard. And we run a full play set of Amit, Beast of Gluttony. Say 1500, 1500. We don't really care about his cost because we're getting it for free. Um, when this card enters your field, destroy target resonator. If you do gain life equal to its defense, just a fantastic card. This is our main removal for the deck and just a good solid giant beater. He can end the game in a couple turns. Similarly, we run a full play set of the Manticore. 900-900 for this cost. We don't really care about that. He has flying. When he enters the field, choose one. Look at your opponent's hand and choose a card. They discard that card or destroy target addition or regalia your opponent controls. Uh, regalia aren't legal in New Frontiers, so we don't really care about that. But it blows up additions. Additions? <laughs> it blows up additions. Or it uh, strips your opponent from one card in their hand. And you get a look at their hand. Really, really good. Most of the time, I just choose the hand one. But if they have some really problematic additions, you can do that too. And then finally, we have the rest of the sideboard. And because we use eight slots on our Chimeras, the little bit of rest of the sideboard is a little, um, well, it's not as fleshed out as it could be. So we have a, another Separation of Fates, just in case we need another one for um, those pesky, pesky decks where we need to get, get rid of their abilities. Pretty good. We also similarly run another Kagi's Moonbeam Butterfly. Just for those situations where we really, really need a life-stealing altar, or if they're, you know, hosing us in other different ways, um, this could be a good one. And then, once again, another Severing Winds, just, just in case we need another Severing Winds. You're up in a match, you notice your opponent is playing into your Severing Winds a lot, side into another Severing Winds, so you have four. And then we have Scarlet's Agony. So this is a one-drop wind, quick cast, chant story. It says, remove target attacking J Resonator from the game, or from battle, draw a card. So basically it makes it so one of your opponent's dudes doesn't deal any damage to you this turn. Um, if they have another way to recover it, they can still attack again. But it's just a really good card, especially if they're going all in on like a J Resonator strategy. Just really good, and it replaces itself. I run two of these. And then finally I run two Thought Controls, because um, it's just really good. Your opponent reveals their hand, choose a card with total cost real less, they discard that card for a single Darkness Will. This is really good in like control, or against control decks, or decks where you're afraid they're just going to kill you super quick so you can maybe try to side into some thought controls to strip them of a lot of their early game potential or like key combo cards or anything like that it's just a really good card in general and there you guys go that was my Lilius pedal the nine tailed fox altar fox i guess is what we're calling it uh, strategy video if you like the video just maybe leave a like maybe leave a comment maybe even subscribe if you have not already every little bit helps and i appreciate it oh so very much 
Let me know what you think of this deck. Let me know what decks you're running in New Frontiers right now if you're into the competitive side. Personally, I only have two hyper competitive decks. I have this one that I've been jamming, and I also have a, an Ayu deck because I love Ayu. I refuse to play Shahrazad. I, I absolutely refuse to play it. I think she's cool, but I think she's a little, little, little too oppressive right now. Something definitely needs to be done about her, but I digress. Um, if you already said all that stuff. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good one, and I hope to see you next time. See you later, guys.